Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Blair and today is part four in my curating and decluttering my makeup series. Today we're doing palettes. We're doing eyeshadow palettes and face palettes. And to be honest, this is a category I've been thinking about for quite a while and I feel like I'm going to be able to do this pretty easily because I know what I use and what I don't. And I'm just gonna be super, super honest and brutal with myself. And I hope you guys enjoy this one. You seem to be enjoying this series. So I hope that uh, you like seeing all of my palettes and what I'm keeping and what I'm getting rid of. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share it with somebody that you think might like it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have two of these clear acrylic organizers that I keep palettes in, and then I have some more palettes back here that are different sizes and they don't really fit into one of these organizers. So we will start up front. And the first thing on top here is the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. This is a definite keep. I haven't had this for that long, um, but I really love this. I don't use this all the time, but I use it when I do more makeup or when I wear more makeup. But you have a light contour shade, which works well for me. You have the deep contour shade, which is too dark for me for my face, but it's pretty on the eyes. And then you have two highlights as well. I love, love, love this. I even love the packaging of this for some reason. I don't know. I think it's just because it's nice and simple, but I really enjoy this, so I will be keeping it. Next is the Maybelline Nudes of New York eyeshadow palette. This is pretty recent purchase for me. I got it um, in my last Ulta haul I posted a little while ago, and Honestly, I don't have many drugstore eyeshadow palettes that I like, but I actually really like this one. I like the colors, and it's a really good mix of mattes and shimmers in here. And actually, I'm kind of surprised, but I am going to keep this. I like these colors, and I think this is pretty good for drugstore. Then we have the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nudes eyeshadow palette. This is probably my favorite eyeshadow palette that I own. And I know a lot of people said this was super boring and nothing to get excited about when this came out. But to me, this is just everything that I love in a palette. It's the colors I love. It's shimmer and mattes. And I have a dark brown in here that I can use as eyeliner. You have a really light cream shade that you can use all over your lid as brow highlight, as an inner corner highlight. You have some cool tones and some warm tones in here. I just love this palette. So absolutely, we'll be keeping this one. Next, this is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Pillow Talk palette. This is the larger Pillow Talk palette that has, um, let's see how many colors in here, 12 shadows. And I don't use this a ton, but I love Charlotte Tilbury and I pretty much collect her stuff. So this I will definitely be keeping. I do use the lighter colors in here. It's just mainly these dark pinks that I don't use a lot, but I like this and I love Charlotte Tilbury, obviously. So I will be keeping this one. Then we have the Charlotte Tilbury, is this the Starry Eyes to Hypnotize? So this came out, this was the holiday palette, I believe of 2019. And this, I don't think you can get this anymore, but this palette is so, so pretty. And I don't, again, I don't use this a ton, but I like how how much variety you get in here. So you get these colors and these really that are lighter and you could do something really quick and easy with. Then you also have these really pretty greens and this deep um, kind of a navy black out here. Definitely, again, we'll be keeping this. You guys know 
I love my Charlotte Tilbury stuff. Next, we have Anastasia, the Sultry palette. So this was a holiday palette a few years ago as well. And then I believe they brought it back for a little while. I'm not sure if you can get this now, but this is a really unique palette. To me, this is very much a cool toned palette, even though you do have a few warmer tones in here, like this peach and this um, brown up here is a little more of a warm toned brown. But predominantly, I would say this is more of a cool toned palette. I love the shimmers in here. I like the shimmers in here more than the mattes, to be honest, but the dark brown and the black are pretty good for dark shadows, but um, I don't, again, use it a ton. Let me swatch for you. So there's the dark brown and the black from this palette. Pretty good. Um, this is definitely more of like a special occasion palette. It's not really an everyday palette for me, but I do like the colors in here. So I do want to keep that one. Okay, let's move on to this. This, this is one of the Sigma eyeshadow palettes. This is the Warm Neutrals palette. I actually got this in New York City in, gosh, now I can't think of it. What is the store, the makeup store that's now attached to Forever 21, but it's Riley Rose, maybe? I feel like it's Riley Rose. I could be wrong, but I think that's right. Anyway, they have a bunch of different makeup brands that you don't see as often in that store, and they had this palette and I remember I loved it. I love the colors, which is why I bought it. But every time I have used this palette, this it's just not my favorite. And sometimes I think, well, maybe am I missing something? I don't know. It's just the formulas are, the colors are very underwhelming. Like I've tried to use this a few times for like planning out a video to do. And every time I use them, they just don't do it for me. So this one is going to go. Next, we will move on to some ColourPop palettes. First is this one. This actually I haven't even taken out of the box yet. I got this a few weeks ago from Ulta. This is one of those palettes that I always wanted from ColourPop back to when it first came out and I just never got it. But Ulta recently got this one and I don't know what it is, but the colors in here just really speak to me, really, really speak to me. This is the Wild Nothing palette from ColourPop and I, I don't know what it is about this, but the colors in here just scream spring to me, just kind of pretty pastels, a lot of pretty shimmers, I haven't even used this palette yet, but I, I just love looking at it. So I'm going to use this in a video soon, I think. Uh, so this is a definite keeper. Next from ColourPop is the Nude Mood Palette. This I love. Also, I will definitely be keeping this. This is kind of more of a warm nude palette, similar to um, Going Coconuts from ColourPop, but this one is a little bit more on the warm side. Uh, but love these colors. Definitely will keep that one. And then we have the Going Coconuts palette, like everyone else. I love this palette. One of my favorite palettes in my collection, for sure. This shade in the center, Cocoa, Cr Cocoa Crush. This is probably one of my favorite shadows ever. It's like, it's so bright. You can barely even see it. I mean that this color is so stunning. I love it. One of my favorite palettes ever. I've actually considered buying a backup of this cause I love this one so much. So we'll be keeping that one. And then I have the baby got peach palette from ColourPop. This I am going to get rid of. I never reach for this, and I, I don't think I'm going to, to be honest. I do like peach, the color, but not necessarily on my eyes. I'm not really sure why I bought this one. 
to be honest. Um, yeah, doesn't speak to me, so this one I am gonna get rid of. Next is the Carly Bible palette from Anastasia. This was one when I saw the pictures on Instagram. I wanted this immediately. Um, because I do like the colors, I like the packaging, I think it's really pretty. But I I don't know. This is a this is hard. Because this is definitely not an everyday palette. Most of these shades in here are not things I would use just on an everyday basis. I don't know. This is going to be a maybe for now. I like some of the colors in here. Like some of these, like this mandala shade. Kind of an interesting, kind of looks lavender, but it's it has a little bit of a blue shift to it. It's nice. So some of these I do like, but I just don't know. So this is going to go in the maybe pile for now. In fact, now that I say that, this, so this is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette. And this kind of reminds me of the Carly Bible palette. Carly Bible Mercury Retrograde, but with more colors. This one is a lot more versatile to me because you do get some more natural looking shades in here, but then you do have the fun pops of color with the glitter as well. I think I'm definitely more likely to use this one. So that makes the decision for me. I'm going to keep the Mercury Retrograde and get rid of the Carly Bible palette. Oh, next is Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is one of one of the best palettes of 2020, if not the best palette of 2020. I love this. Um, I love every single shade in here, every single one. Um, yeah, nothing really more to say other than this is a stunning palette. It's very different from everything else that I have in my collection and I will absolutely be keeping that one. Next is the bronze palette. This also very, very beautiful. This is not something, I definitely reach for the glam palette more than the bronze palette, but the bronze is pretty for summertime. So I will keep this. Uh, definitely, I think I've said this before, but if you were on the fence between the glam or the bronze palette, I would go for the glam. I just, I feel like it's a little more versatile, but I like this one also. So I will be keeping the bronze palette. And next, the palette that still is in its packaging is <laughs> not, I have not thrown the box away on this. I don't know why it just feels wrong to throw the box away for the Biba palette. Obviously this is stunning. So to me this is kind of a mix between the glam and the bronze palette. It's warm and cool instead of just being predominantly warm or predominantly cool. But this again every shade in here is beautiful. Love them all so much. Like this shade is called Shine one of the prettiest shimmers. And we have this shade, which is just kind of a, kind of a terracotta color, so pretty, but look how, I mean, I barely swiped that. Look how pigmented it is. Then there's this really good dark brown in here. Seed, oh, I mean, these, these shadows in this palette are really, really good. So, needless to say, I will definitely be keeping the Biba palette. And last but not least, in this first clear organizer, this is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Essential Deluxe Eyeshadow, Eyeshadow and Face Palette. This was something I bought during the Nordstrom sale two or three years ago. Um, never used this. Honestly, don't use face palettes that much, so I really need to stop buying them. For some reason, I always continue to buy face palettes, but I, I never, ever use them. Um, so yeah, this is pretty, but not, not something that I ever use or think I will use. The packaging is pretty, also very, very bulky, um, so I am going to pass that one on. And that is the end of our first 
clear container. Moving on to number two here. This one, I have a feeling a whole bunch of these are gonna go. First is this, this is from Tarte. This was the um, collaboration they did with Whitney Simmons. I bought this immediately because I love Whitney Simmons. Um, if you are not familiar with her, she is a fitness YouTuber and she did this collaboration with Tarte a year or two ago. Um, super pretty. I bought it honestly just to support her. Um, these are not really colors that I use a ton, so I will be getting rid of this. Um, but yeah, if you don't follow Whitney, you should. Um, she's one of the best fitness YouTubers for sure. But I'm gonna pass that one on. Next is this from Milani. This is the Most Loved Mattes palette. This is pretty nice, actually. They don't make this anymore. Um, Milani kind of redid all of their eyeshadows a while back, or their eyeshadow palettes. So I am gonna get rid of this. It's nice, it's all mattes. It has warms, warm tones, some purple tones, and then more neutrals over here. I've seen this recently at TJ Maxx or Marshalls for like $3.99 or so. Um, and it's pretty nice, but I wouldn't use it again in a video uh, since you can't really buy this now. Not something I reach for. So this one I am gonna pass on. Next is the Hourglass um, Ambient Lighting Edit Ghost Palette. So this is, let's see, I can't remember if this is, I think this was 2019's holiday palette from Hourglass. Um, I love these, I buy these pretty much every time they've come out with one, I bought these. So you get some blushes in here, you get a bronzer, you get highlighter, and then two of their ambient lighting powders, which I love. Love this. I don't, like I said, I really don't use face palettes often, but I love these hourglass palettes. So this I definitely do want to keep. And then I have this one, I believe, this was from, 2000, yeah, 2020. This was the Sculpture palette. Um, again, you have two blushes, a bronzer, highlighter, and then the ambient powders. Again, definitely want to keep this. Um, if you love Hourglass powders, this is a really nice way to try a bunch of them at once. Definitely keep that one. Again from Hourglass, this is the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. So this is three highlighters from um, Hourglass and these are so pretty. I don't know if you can buy this anymore, um, but these are very, like look how bright they are. You can't even hardly tell them apart, but they're very, very blinding highlights um, in the same hourglass ambient lighting powder formula. I don't use this often, but I love it, so I do want to keep it. Next is this little face palette from Benefit. This is the, let's see, World of Blushes palette, and you get the Hoola Bronzer, the California blush, the dandelion blush, and the Rocketeur blush. This I got at TJ Maxx. I'm not sure if this was like a limited edition they did or something, but to be honest, I don't love this. I don't use it. Um, to me, Hoola is a little, it's a little bit dark of a bronzer for me. I just don't think it's the most flattering on my skin tone. Just not something that I use. There is the California blush right there. This I'll pass on. Um, if you like the Benefit box powders, this is kind of a nice thing to have, but again, I don't think you can buy this because um, I got mine at TJ Maxx, so this I am gonna pass on. Ooh, next we have this little baby palette from Aether Beauty. This is the Topaz Mini Crystal Palette. This is four shimmery colors, and these, these are my kind of colors. You have kind of a gold, a bronze, 
a dark kind of grayish green and then a shimmery brown. Um, no one talks about Aether, I feel, or not no one, but I don't hear a lot of people talk about Aether, but their shadows are actually pretty nice. So there are all of them swatched. Um, they're kind of more on the subtle side, but they're very pretty for like an eyeshadow topper or something. Um, and these colors for me are right up my alley. They kind of remind me of the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. So this I definitely do want to keep. They have another um, shade of this. I want to say it's more purpley tones, um, but I don't have that one, just this one. Um, but I do want to keep that one. Then we have this little palette from Too Faced. Who remembers these palettes? They're in like little tin packages. And this was the Natural Eyes palette. This is probably one of the first eyeshadow palettes I ever had, like a higher end eyeshadow palette. Um, it's very pretty. I think they've actually, or I know, they've actually repackaged and redone these palettes a year or two ago. So this is very old. I never use this anymore, but it is pretty. Nice colors, um, but I don't use it. So that I am going to be getting rid of. Then we have this mini palette from Huda Beauty. It's the nude light palette. This is what it looks like. It's very pinky, purpley. This I am gonna put in the maybe for now. Uh, there's some shades in here that I like, like this shimmery lavender. Oh, that's pretty. This shimmery lavender. I don't know if you can even see it, but very, very pretty. Uh, but I don't reach for this palette, and I don't really know why. Probably because I'm not a huge pink person. Um... Well, that's not true. I like rosy pinks and I like purple, but I'm not a pink pink fan. Uh, that probably doesn't make sense, but I don't know. This is gonna be a maybe for now. I'm not sure. And this is the Sephora Clean Bouncy Eyeshadow Palette. I did a video on this back when this first came out um, with the Sephora Clean Glowing Skin foundation. So these are very interesting. They really don't work well if you don't use your finger. Um, they're definitely kind of like the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blushes. They're kind of like that. Um, but you can't, from what I've been able to tell, you can't really use a brush with these and it's hard to apply colors like this dark brown or this yellow or orangey color with your finger. You kind of need to be able to use a brush. So yeah, I like the idea of this, but I do wish you could use a brush with these and I'd probably keep it, um, but not something I think I'm gonna use. So I am gonna pass that one on. Then we have this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Face Palette in, let's see, the, the shade is Lightgasm. So this came out mm, like two years ago, I would say, and it has a bronzer. Uh, I guess you would say both of these are blushes and then a highlight. I have used this, um, but this is not, it's not super pigmented, you guys. Like, I don't know why, but like I'm digging my finger in the bronzer and you can barely see it. Like, let me try the blush. Even the blush next to it, it's very, I don't know, this is just very, this is a very underwhelming palette. And I love Charlotte Tilbury, I love the packaging, but the formula is not great on this. Um, so sadly, I'm not gonna keep this. I am gonna get rid of this one. Next, we have the Becca palette they did with Chrissy Teigen. This is actually pretty. Um, and I remember, I, actually, I think I actually found this at TJ Maxx, I wanna say, after it had been out for a while and I was so excited to find it. But we all know Becca is about to go away. There's some, that's the bronzer right there. 
and then we have this hot pink blush which is there this is pretty but again I don't use it you can't get it anymore so I'm gonna pass that on and that's it for bin number two let's move on to these that don't really fit in one of the clear containers first is tartlet and bloom palette love 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 this palette honest honestly my two favorite palettes are probably this one and the Too Faced natural nudes um this one this is perfect you can do a really easy everyday look in here or you can do something darker you have good shades for a eyeshadow in here or for eyeliner in here um, my favorite shade in this palette is funny girl look at that shade oh I love that one mm, so good love 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 this palette we'll definitely keep it next is this little baby palette from buxom this is the may contain nudity eyeshadow palette and this is just a little six pan palette you get let's see two mattes and four shimmers in here this is old i've had this probably for three years four years it's it, it's definitely old um and it's honestly very similar color wise to the going coconuts palette from ColourPop. i don't think you can buy this anymore i think again this came from either tj maxx or marshall's i don't see myself using it again so i am gonna pass that one on Next is from Urban Decay. This is the Naked Reloaded palette. This one was a little bit of a disappointment. I got this last, I think it was last spring when they had Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty, but something about this palette just does not wow me. Like even the shadows in here were not fantastic when I've used this palette. And I don't know they swatch okay but I don't know this palette just does not speak to me um, honestly I wish they would bring back a new and improved naked palette like the original naked palette I had that palette a long time ago and I stupidly got rid of it one time and now I wish that I still had it because this I think this was intended to kind of replace that palette but it's I don't know. Not as good as that one. Um, and I don't use it. So I am going to pass this one on. Next, you guys know I love this one. This is the Naked Honey Palette from Urban Decay. I used this in one of my most recent, or maybe the, the most recent, Full Face of Nothing New videos. But I love every single shadow in here. The formula on these is amazing. The shimmers and the mattes. I would use every color in here. Love this so, so much. Definitely will keep that one. Oh my gosh, this one really hurts. This is the Hello Kitty and Friends ColourPop Snow Much Fun palette. And this is it. Honestly, I said this in my review, but I bought this palette because it was Hello Kitty. Because I, I mean, I'm a huge Hello Kitty fan. I've always loved Hello Kitty. I just, they got me with the Hello Kitty theming on this one. But this is not a very wearable palette, to be honest. The colors in here are not super wearable. I love this shimmery lavender. I wish there were some more mattes in here. I feel like that's partially where they went wrong. Like they did this one row of mattes here, but I feel like if they had made this brown, more of a matte, it would help make this a little more wearable. It's just, I don't know, some, something about it is just not, not the best, not my favorite. Um, but I'm gonna put it in maybe for now because I'm not ready to let go of this packaging <laughs> just yet, but I probably will pass that one on. Next, we have the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes eyeshadow palette um, so this is just a palette full of neutral matte 
eyeshadows and I feel like this is the perfect palette if if you're a very basic neutral matte person you don't like shimmer you like something very very basic and you just want a one and done palette that you could do anything with I feel like this would be a good one you have a black you have a brown you have tons of darker browns and reddish or warm tone browns some good transition shades you have a light shade this is just a nice palette to have in your collection I like how small and compact it is also I also feel like because the tones in here are so diverse you could really use this on a lot of different skin tones I feel like if my mom would let me do her eyeshadow I would use this palette on her because um, there's so much variety in here so this I do want to keep next is the KKW Beauty eyeshadow palette the classic eyeshadow palette I didn't expect to love this to be honest I bought this I think during the last Ulta 21 days of beauty sale um, the colors in here are kind of interesting to me they don't necessarily go together but her shadows are actually very good like that matte brown was like one small swipe and it's very creamy not patchy this color is nice this like lavender kind of color I don't know I don't have anything with a color story quite like this one so this I do want to keep I also really for some reason love the package the KKW beauty packaging in this beige color I don't know something about it I really like Next is the Soft Glam Palette from Anastasia. Obviously, this is a classic. You can't go wrong with this palette. The formula, so good. The mattes and the shimmers. To me, this is the perfect fall time palette. Um, and it's such a classic. So this I would never get rid of. We'll definitely be keeping it. As well as the Modern Renaissance from Anastasia. This one, similar to Soft Glam in some ways, but this one definitely has more of a purpley kind of undertone to it. Um, but you still get some nice neutrals in here as well. You get this great dark brown and some fun, more fuchsia, purpley kind of colors in here. Love this palette love this formula so that I will definitely keep okay moving on to a palette that I have no idea why I bought and this is from Juvia's place this is the magic mini Juvia's palette is that right yeah and looking in here this was a dumb purchase I do not know why well I do know why I bought this I bought this because I saw Kelly Gooch use it um, here on YouTube she is another makeup beauty youtuber and she uses a lot of color and it always looks good on her so I felt the need to buy this at one point I think it was on sale on Ulta's website um, but this has not been used and looking at it now I don't feel compelled to use it so this I will probably try to sell on Poshmark or something because it's brand new so not quite sure what I was thinking when I bought this so that one is going to go moving on to these this is the kittenish glow by Jesse James Decker palette this is also from Alexa Persico so this comes with a or two bronzers a blush and a highlight I haven't used this in a very long time so the dark bronzer in here is too dark. The light bronzer is really, really light. Like you can barely see it. And then the blush is also very light. You can barely see it. I never reach for this anyway. Um, so this, I am gonna pass on. Next we have the Physicians Formula uh, collab they did with Casey Holmes. I love Casey Holmes, one of my favorite YouTubers to watch ever. Um, I've been watching her for a long time. And this was her collab. Uh, the packaging on this is so large. 
that I definitely don't reach for it because of the packaging for sure. Um, you get a bronzer in here. It's the deep bronzer, the deep butter bronzer. Um, you get one of the blushes, which is kind of light. Um, and then you get the highlighter. So there's the highlighter, the blush, and the bronzer. I haven't used this in probably three years since I got it. Um, it's just not, not something that I use or think I'm going to use. Then we have these shadows down here. These are not everyday shades for me. Um, and the packaging is just not, not something that I love. Um, but I do love Casey Holmes. Um, but I am going to let that go for now. Oh my gosh. Next is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This was the volume two palette. As you can see, it is still in the box. I truly do not know why I bought this. Again, this has not been used. It has just been sitting and why I felt the need to buy this, I don't know because I can promise you I would use maybe this first row and nothing else in this palette, most likely. Um, I do like Jaclyn Hill, but I never actually had her original Morphe palette. But I remember when this came out, I felt the need to buy it for some reason, and I don't know why. It still has the little protective plastic piece. So this I will probably resell um, since it's brand new. Not something I would use. I'm not not that colorful <laughs> as you guys know. Then we have this random Z palette and this has two random eyeshadows in it. I don't know. I feel like these are Anastasia shadows. That's one of them and that's the other one um I didn't even know I had this to be honest uh, I will keep the Z palette I guess but I never buy individual shadows really so I feel like I might not even use this actually you know what I think I am gonna get rid of that I feel like I'm just holding on to that for no reason so I'm gonna let that go oh my gosh this is the Lorac Pro what is this the Pro 2 palette this is the very first, I remember, this was when I was first getting into YouTube and makeup and I went to Ulta and I bought this palette and I remember it was, I don't know, I just felt so cool because I had gotten this and everybody was using the Lorac palettes at the time. This is actually a really pretty palette, especially this color. I did hit pan slightly on this color up here, but this is old, very, very old. And I have things similar to this that I'm gonna choose over this now. So sadly, I am gonna pass this on, but I do actually like the Lorac eyeshadow formula. I kinda wish they would make a comeback, but I am gonna get rid of that one. Next, yet another palette sitting here in the box. This is the Too Faced Gingerbread Extra Spicy palette. Again, you guys came from Marshalls. It was $29.99, which honestly, I probably could have gotten it for even cheaper than that. It's never been used. This will teach me a lesson to not continue to buy things from Marshalls, TJ Maxx. The colors in here are pretty, but not these are not colors I'm gonna use not something I'm gonna gravitate towards I do not know why I felt it was necessary to buy this but I did um, so this I will probably resell it's never been used I need to stop buying random things TJ Maxx and Marshalls next we have this from Aether Beauty this is the summer solstice eyeshadow palette this is really pretty. I got this one time uh, when it was on sale at Sephora, I think. And this is really nice, you guys. No one talks about Aether eyeshadows either, I feel like. But they are really, really nice and creamy and very easy 
to blend and work with. This is a really good range of colors. You have some browns, you have some purples, some bronzy colors, a nice highlighting color. This I really want to use in a video. I'm not sure that I have used this in a video before, but it's nice and I like it. So I'm going to keep this one. Next, oh my gosh, this one's going to be hard. This was the Tarte and Aspen Ovard palette. Oh my gosh, this is probably one of my favorite palettes Tarte has ever done. Um, I just love these colors. When I first got this, I used this pretty much exclusively. I used it all the time. Even the blush and the highlight in here, oh, they're just so pretty. I don't think I can get rid of this palette, even though you can't get it anymore. I still love these colors in here. Yeah, I feel like I have to keep this. I mean, this shade, what is this called? Endless Summer. I mean, I wish they would redo this palette and bring it back. Like, look at that brown. Oh, I love this. There's, I can't get rid of this. I know I've been getting rid of everything that's limited edition, but I just can't. I can't get rid of that one. Next is ColourPop. This is the So Jaded palette with Kathleen Lights. And this is what it looks like. I used this quite a bit when I first got it, but honestly, I haven't used it in at least a year, maybe more. I don't know about this one, you guys. It's getting really hard. I do like that this is different from anything else that I have, and there are some really nice colors in here, but there are some crazy colors in here as well. This one's gonna go in the maybe for now. Next is the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. This one, this one was a little bit of a disappointment to me, to be honest. A lot of the shades in here are very, um, they have a lot of fallout, and I don't know, they were not the easiest shadows to blend. And to be honest, I need to stop buying these large pan palettes from ColourPop because I just don't use them. They just sit and never get used. Um, but the colors are pretty. Why is this so hard? Okay, let me think about that for a second. That's gonna go in the maybes. Next we have the Tati Beauty Volume 1 palette. Um, this palette's okay. The glitters in here are really nice, very interesting. Um, I do think the mattes could be a little bit better, especially the dark brown and the black. I don't, I don't know. Not something I reach for or really see myself reaching for, even for a special occasion. So that one is gonna go. Next is the ABH Norvina Volume 4 palette. Now this one is very colorful. I loved this when it came out. This just really, really spoke to me for some reason, and it still kind of does speak to me. I love the packaging, um, but I mean, honestly, there's some shades in here I'm definitely not gonna use, like this, the yellow, the pink, this. I mean, a lot of these I'm just not gonna use. I think this one's gonna have to go, you guys. I like it. But I'm trying to be really strict and only keep the things I know I will use. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to use this. So I'm going to pass that one on. And this is it. I have some of my smaller palettes in here. Uh, so we'll go through these really quickly. I have two of these from Sephora. These are the I Love palettes from Sephora collection. Um, let's see, I have two of them. I have the Medium Cool, which is this one. These are so nice. The shimmers and the mattes, both. I mean, really, really good. Like That's the brown. It's a shimmery brown. I mean, they are, for the quality and the price, I think these are like $14. These are so good, and I love that they give you this larger pan of the lighter shade out here. Love this. 
definitely keep that. And then I have the light warm as well. Looks like this, just the browns are a little bit more of a warmer undertone. Really nice shimmers and again, the really big cream shout out over here. Love, love, love those. Next is the classic Urban Decay Naked 2 Basics palette. This is this is such an underrated palette to me. I know no one talks about this anymore, but this is so good. I actually used this palette in the video on my channel from like a year, year and a half ago. It has the most views. It has like 22,000 views, I think. And I used, it was just an everyday makeup tutorial using this palette. And it was part of my 12 days of palettes, if you were watching me back then. Apparently people like this palette, so I've actually thought about maybe recreating that video and redoing the look that I did with this palette. Um, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, but definitely want to keep this. That is a classic. Next we have this little mini palette from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Easy Smoky Eye Palette. And it just has six shades in here. You have three mattes and three shimmers. Kind of more of a rosy, warm little palette, but really, really nice. Shimmer. These shadows blend. I mean, look at that. So good. This is a nice little palette to have. It's really small and compact, so... I do want to keep that one. And then I have three of the Charlotte Tilbury little eyeshadow quads. First is the classic little pillow top palette. I love this. Such a classic if you love Charlotte Tilbury. So I definitely want to keep that. Then we have the Exagger Eyes palette which looks like this, kind of similar to Pillow Talk, but a little more cool toned. Love this one as well. And then we have the, what is this called? The Desert Haze palette. This I love, this is four matte shades, but these four colors together are so pretty. I love this. I did a video on this palette a while back when her airbrush bronzer came back, came out. Yeah. This is gorgeous, love all of these colors. Definitely want to keep those. Next, I have two of the mini Natasha Denona palettes. I have the mini Glam and the mini Retro palette. These are really nice. If you're wanting to try Natasha Denona, this is a really, really great way to do it. This mini Retro palette is really nice, especially this green color. I love it. And then this kind of mauve pinky color. And then we have this shimmery, oh, look at that color. So pretty. Love, love this. And love the mini glam palette as well. Can't go wrong with this. The brown in here is so good. So nice. Um, love both of those. Next, I have a bunch of the e.l.f. Bite Size palettes. I have Truffle, uh, Rose Water, Very Bad, Cream and Sugar, and Pumpkin Pie. These I actually want to keep. Um, these are really nice. And I like how each one is kind of its own little theme. Like, this is Rose Water kind of more of a purpley theme. Then you have truffle, which are these two pretty browns. This shim this has a little bit of shimmer. It's kind of a sh dark navy. And then this bright silver, really pretty. Very bad is more um, rosy kind of colors, rosy purples. Pumpkin pie is the classic kind of bronze colors and then cream and sugar is just a really good neutral everyday palette. These are really nice, super good for three dollars. I really love these. Then we have one of the Fenty Snap Shadows. This is the number one and this is what it looks like. I actually like this as well. I don't use it as much but it's really nice 
and pretty. I like how small and compact it is. Really nice neutral palette to have to take with you somewhere because it's so tiny. So that one I will use and I'll keep. Then we have one of the Bare Minerals Gin Nude palettes. This is the neutral one. These come in a bunch of different colors. This one, I know they say it's more of a neutral palette, but I actually think this is more on the cool tone side, but I do really like it. Um, lots of really pretty shades in here. Dark brown, which is always a must. Kind of more of a cool toned brown. Nice. So these are good. I like these from Bare Minerals. This is the only one that I have, but I like it and I do want to keep that one. And last but not least is this little KKW Beauty holiday palette. This is from this last year, so this is not very old. This is a pretty good little palette. Like I can always judge a palette for me based on how the matte browns are. These are pretty good and creamy. Nothing special, but these are the kind of palettes I love. These are my colors, uh, and I like this, so I will keep this for now. I know this is not something you can go out and get, but I do really like this, so I'm going to keep that one as well. Okay, now we're just going to quickly go over the maybes and make a decision on these. The first one is the Bare Necessities palette. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this one. I feel like it's because I love the colors. I feel like I haven't used this enough. It's just kind of been stuck in the back of my drawer. So I feel like I wanna keep that one for now. Then I have the So Jaded palette. This one I'm gonna pass on. I just don't think I'm gonna get any I'm not going to get much use out of this. Um, there's some colors in here that I would use, but most of them are kind of just not things I would normally gravitate towards. I kind of went through a phase where I liked more colorful palettes, but I feel like I won't use this. So I'm going to pass that one on. Then we have the e.l.f. Retro Paradise palette. Same for this one. This was in the same kind of phase as the... So Jaded palette, I was kind of more into these uh, brighter colors, and I don't know, this is a limited edition also, so I feel like I'm not going to use this anymore, so we'll get rid of that one. And last but not least, we have the Mini Huda Beauty Light Nude palette and the Hello Kitty and Friends palette. So I feel like I want to keep one or the other of these mainly because they both have one of these pretty shimmery lavender shades and a lot of my other palettes don't have a shimmery lavender like this. So the Hello Kitty one is here and then the Huda Beauty one is over here. I think I like the Huda Beauty one more to be honest. Um, yeah. So I'm going to keep that one and sadly i'm gonna get rid of the hello kitty even though i love the packaging okay i just spent like 30 minutes trying to get these to fit in a way that i like how it looks and this is the best i could do so basically i have all of my smaller palettes up here the elf bite size fenty my drawer palette they fit in this little um organizer and then I have my two clear acrylic organizers back here. So I have Natasha Denona, Anastasia, Too Faced, my ColourPop palettes, my Tartlet and Bloom. And then back here we have some face palettes from Hourglass, uh, the Charlotte Tilbury large palettes, Naked Honey, Maybelline Nudes of New York. Um, that's my Mario palette. Aether palette and the Jesse James Decker palette. And that's it. This is so much better. So I'm getting rid of these. I'm getting rid of all of this stuff. Um, so I'm very happy with that. Now all of my palettes fit in one drawer, which is really nice. And I'm very, very happy with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part four in my curating and decluttering series. 
I'm not sure what will be next. It will probably be highlighters and primers, but stay tuned for part five. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe and go follow me on Instagram at simply.blair. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.